What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Turf Watch. Week 14 of the NFL season is here, and today we are talking about the biggest matchup of the year, the Battle of the Titans, two Super Bowl contenders. That's right, it is the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the New England Patriots, Thursday night football. Primetime football doesn't get better than this. Uh, that's sarcasm, obviously. This game has been being clowned all over the internet this week for being an ugly one, one that most people aren't really looking forward to. But us Steelers fans, we're super excited about it, as always. Taking a look at this game, Steelers are six-point favorites, same as last week when, unfortunately, they lost outright to the Cardinals. Over under 30, a super low one, per usual. This is a game where probably most people are saying the under because they don't believe in either of these teams. Just last week, the Chargers beat the Patriots 6 to nothing, which some people say set the NFL back 100 years. Wasn't pretty, but neither was the Steelers game, and now we got them on Thursday Night Football. So here we are, Turf Watch, taking a look around the internet, seeing what people are saying this week, and uh, making sure that they aren't getting disrespected. So let's take a look and see what everyone's been saying. It seems like every week the narrative changes. It's Matt Canada, it's Mike Tomlin, it's Kenny Pickett, it's Deontay Johnson, it's Alex Highsmith. It's always someone new, but this week it seems like everyone's getting a little bit of it, especially after that loss to a Cardinals team who had only won two games prior this season. Now this is something I've been seeing a lot this week. It's people calling for Mike Tomlin's job, which personally I think is ridiculous. You're entitled to your own opinion, but here's some of the opinions I've seen going around. Uh, here's one on Twitter. It says, Tomlin's, big, Tomlin's biggest indictment is his lack of coaching tree. He's never once had a member of his staff become an NFL head coach. McVay has four, Shanahan has four, Reed has five, and then he finishes up saying nothing special going on in Pittsburgh. Now, to an extent, this is true. Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, Andy Reid, they've had great success getting their coordinators into head coaching jobs. Uh, but he says that no, no member of his staff has become an NFL head coach. Bruce Arians, Super Bowl champion with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the head coach there. I guess he's forgetting about that. Uh, but yeah, there aren't a ton. But I think it's a weird thing. I don't think it's the biggest indictment on him. Uh, especially when you look at Bill Belichick and the Patriots. They haven't really had success with their coaching tree. McDaniels has been fired multiple times. Matt Patricia was fired as head coach of the Lions. There's probably more that can be mentioned, but I don't think this is anything meaningful at all and something that shouldn't be brought up when we're talking about head coaching issues. Now, outside the critiques of the coaching tree stuff, which I think is baloney, here's another take that I think is interesting. Andrew Philponi He's on this show a lot because of his hot takes. He gets the attention he wants. So here we go. His trade proposal is Mike Tomlin to the Commanders for Washington's 2024 first-round pick and their 2025 second-round pick. So Tomlin goes back to the region he's from, gets full roster control, and gets a big raise. Who says no? I, I think if, if you were to ever part ways with Tomlin, the best possible scenario would be a trade. But how often do you see trades for head coaches in the NFL? I don't see the Steelers trading Mike Tomlin. I think it would be a really bad look on the organization. I just I just don't get it. I don't think they fire him. I don't think they trade him. This team is still in the playoff hunt. The season end today, they'd be the six or seven seed. I don't think it's a big deal. What is a big deal, though, is playoff wins. And we're looking at another season without one. Maybe a playoff berth, but will he get a win? And this would be 10 plus years, I think, without a playoff win, which is pretty unacceptable if you ask me. Uh, so the... The critiques are understandable, but I don't think Tomlin is the top of the list. All right, let's take a look at this AFC right now because it is a complete bloodbath. Everything is still up in the air, specifically this AFC North. Uh, my take for a while was that this division would come down to Week 18 when the Steelers and Ravens play. Right now, it's not looking like that, especially with them dropping the Cardinals game. Every single game is questionable at this point. But right now, Baltimore's 9-3, first place in the AFC North. Steelers 7-5, and five. Browns are tied with them at 7-5, and five. and the Bengals get a big win on primetime Monday Night Football against the Jaguars. They're at 6-6, six and six. only a game behind the Steelers right now, but I think the really interesting thing is that differential. Still, Steelers in the negative, but still 7-5, and five, finding ways to win. It doesn't really matter. 7-5 uh, and five is a good record. They be in the playoffs right now. The rest of this AFC is very interesting as far as the playoff picture. The Colts are tied with the Steelers right now as well. Uh, Buffalo six and six. I don't. I think it's too early to write them off. There's still plenty of football to be played, even though they aren't having the season they expected. That's a team 
the the Bills and the Colts are serious threats to the Steelers making the playoffs, along with the Browns. In that Jaguars game, Trevor Lawrence goes down, and at 8-4, and four, they had a really stellar start to the year. It's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. The rest of the AFC looking into the West. The Broncos, sneaky at 6-6 six and six right now, still in the hunt. Chargers, not really, which that's a topic for another day. They're wasting Justin Herbert's prime. Anyways, this AFC North, or sorry, this AFC is still anyone's anyone's conference. Anyone can make the playoffs. I think it's going to be super interesting. Right now, Steelers are that five seed, which is very interesting. I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. All right, let's take a look at this week's game. Uh, first, let's start the injury report. We thought we were getting healthy at the perfect time. It doesn't really look like that right now with this week's injury report. Kenny Pickett will not play with that ankle injury. Mitch Trubisky will be QB1 going into that game. Patrick Peterson did not practice. Minka uh, was a full participant, but he has a hand issue right now. Maybe broken. Not completely sure. James Pierre did not practice. Elena Roberts did not practice. The best run stopper in the league right there. That's a crucial uh, injury if, if he's to miss this game. Montrevious Adam, Mason Cole, who was quite frankly really bad in that Cardinals game. You got Isaac Ciamalo, did not practice. Keanu Benton, limited practice. And Cam Hayward did not practice. So huge crushing blows to the offensive line, huge crushing blows to the defensive line. Uh, cornerbacks, safeties, linebackers, and your starting quarterback all in the injury report. Now, it's not to say that. Most of these guys won't play. I bet half them, possibly more, will. But at the very least, we know we're missing a couple of these guys, and every single name on here is important. So it's going to be tough, but we know it's the Patriots. Um, we know they're having a rough season. They can't really get it done this year. So I'm not tremendously worried, but it is something to keep an eye out for. Here's another thing that I hear a lot, and it comes after Steelers lose by couple couple points and it's that this is the worst loss that I've ever seen this is the worst loss in the Tomlin era I saw it a lot after that Cardinals game you lose to a 2-10 and 10 team it's a home game blah 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 and it's the worst loss that you've ever seen I think I've seen at least two three more losses in the last three years that were way worse than that way worse than that I don't care if it's home away playoff regular season we're all thinking about the same games right now. We're thinking about the Jaguars game in 2017. We're thinking about the Browns game in 2021 in the playoffs. So many awful games. I'm thinking about the 49ers game week one this season. This was far from the worst one. It was bad from the start. You lose your starting quarterback. This is towards the bottom of the list on worst games that I've ever seen. It wasn't pretty. But people just love to be dramatic about this type of stuff. Now, with that being said, some history shows that this loss possibly is worse than I may be thinking because this tweet says, putting the Steelers' loss in perspective, it's only the second time in franchise history Pittsburgh has lost this late in the season to a team with as bad a record as the Arizona Cardinals. The other, 1940 to the Eagles. In many ways, Sunday was a historic loss. Man, I know how I said earlier in the show that the Steelers-Patriots game could set back the NFL 100 years. Steelers have been doing it this year. Matt Canada, first coach to be fired by the Steelers midseason since the 1940s. Uh, first time they've lost to a team this bad this late in the season since the 1940s. We're really throwing it back. This is some old school, ugly football. I think around the league it's kind of been like that. But for the Steelers right now, you're just... It feels like something's slipping a little bit. I haven't given up yet. I still think the future is extremely bright, but, oh, man, to see these numbers and see how long it's been since this has happened, not good. But like I said, I think there have been many wor uh, losses worse than this. Outside of Tomlin being the scapegoat this week, I'd say that number two guy was Kenny Pickett. Uh, considering he went 7 for 10, threw for 75 yards, made some deep throws uh, in that first half. He, he didn't look awful. He didn't look bad. But there is an issue with the injuries. He's been out of four, five, possibly six games in his career, and he's only played about 24 games. I think the injury thing is starting to become a concern. I think there's a little worry at first, but this guy gets beat up pretty easily. He gets out of games early a lot. Um, it's just not, not a great look. But anyways... The important thing is that Kenny wasn't that bad when he was in the game. The problem was he couldn't stay in the game. Here's a tweet, uh, just to stand up for Kenny a little bit here. 
So the Steelers are 7-2 and when Kenny Pickett starts and finishes the game, and 0-3 and when he does not. So it shows that Kenny Pickett, he's winning most of these games if he can finish them through. The problem is, he's not. Missing 3 out of 13 games is, is huge in the NFL. You have a very small margin of error, and if you're missing 1 out of every 4, 1 out of every 5 games, that's an issue. It's, it's going to be an issue, especially when you aren't playing good in those games that, that you're, you're starting in completely. Now, he's winning, he's winning, but is it good? Not not really. All right, let's get back to these awful takes. This is what the show was started about. This is what it was founded on, trying to find the god-awful takes online. And I think we found the worst one of the year. Well, Steeler Nation on Twitter did, and it was a comment on Facebook, and it says, the Steelers need to cut ties with Joey Porter Jr. Too many penalties, especially at crucial times, gets beat quite a bit. I really hope this one's sarcastic because the level of stupidity on this one is out of the out, off the charts right now this is crazy I don't see why anyone would think this because he's been a phenomenal cornerback and also if you know anything about football you're not gonna cut ties with the dude that you drafted with the 32nd overall pick insane to uh, post I thought you all should see this one crazy stuff on Facebook some more hot takes about this game tomorrow Thursday night football we have a close game with the score being Steelers 0 Patriots 0 and we are now going into overtime could this be the first time a game went into overtime 0-0? I think it's possible, but I don't I don't see it happening. I think Steelers put up some points. So we mentioned the over-under early in the show. Apparently, this is the lowest over-under since 1993. 1993. There hasn't been a 30-point over-under in the NFL since 1993. What does that say about the Steelers? What does that say about the Patriots? I think it says that these offenses stink. And you got Mitch Trubisky versus Bailey Zappi. It's it's ugly. I don't have a ton to say about this. Here's another hot take. Brad Spielberger of Pro Football Focus on Mitch Trubisky starting against Patriots on Thursday night. Based on what we've seen from Kenny Pickett this year, it might actually be an upgrade. This is something I said maybe three weeks in the season, but Mitch Trubisky, we've seen him enough on the field. We know he's not that guy. Unfortunately, He's got the talent, all the talent in the world, but he, he can't make the plays. He's Sometimes he's a bit too aggressive, um, too many turnovers. He's super close. He's super close. And I think if all things go as planned, he could be really good. But the problem is that infrequently happens. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this episode of Turf Watch up right now. Quick turnaround for this Thursday night football game. So not a ton of hot takes, but a lot of negative stuff going on. I'll leave you with this. Here's a quote from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, a, a journalist, Fittipaldo. He says, if you lose these two to Arizona and New England, you're probably going to lose the last four, and it's just going to snowball on you. I think that is a fair assessment of this Steelers team right now. You lose this game tomorrow, it's, I mean, it's time to start packing the bags, if I'm being honest. I know they're still in the hunt. I know if you lose that game, you can still compete. You can still sneak in. But the morale has to be depleted if they don't get this win. They have to win definitively. They have to score more than 20 points. I do think it's going to happen tomorrow night. But it is going to be interesting because of what we've seen. Uh, it's always back and forth. So we'll never know. But until then, we'll just have to wait. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you send me those awful takes on Twitter. At Don Farrow. And I'll make sure to feature them on this show. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.